Lesson 6.8, Patterns with Fractions, Sequences with Addition and Subtraction. We can use addition or subtraction to describe a pattern or create a sequence with fractions. To describe a pattern, we write the terms as equivalent fractions with a common denominator. We learned about common denominators in video 6.4 and that's linked in the description. Then, we find the difference between consecutive terms and write a rule to extend the sequence. And we learned about patterns with decimals in video 3.10, and that's also linked in the description. A pattern is an ordered set of numbers or objects. The order will help us predict what will come next. A sequence is an ordered list of numbers. A term is a number in a sequence. And consecutive means following one right after another. We can create a sequence if we're given a starting term and a rule. If the rule is plus half and we're starting with one, one half more would be one and a half. Plus half, we would add a half to this, it would be two, two whole. Plus half again would be two and a half. We can use the rule to fill in missing terms of a sequence. If we know the rule is plus half and it shows two here, we know this must be two and a half. Knowing the rule can help us complete a sequence or it can help us find a missing term of a sequence. We must first write the fractions as equivalent with common denominators. And again, we learned about equivalent fractions and common denominators in 6.4. So we can use subtraction to find the difference between the terms. And the difference between each term will help us identify the rule. We have 1 and a half, 1 and 3 fourths, 2. 2 and 1 fourth, 2 and 1 half, 2 and 3 fourths. If we write them all with a common denominator, we get 1 and 2 fourths, 1 and 3 fourths, 2. 2 and 1 fourth, 2 and 2 fourths, 2 and 3 fourths, and we can see the terms are increasing by 1 fourth. To make sure we have the correct rule, we need to compare all the terms in the sequence. We have 1 eighth, 1 half, 7 eighths, 5 eighths, 1, then 1 and 3 eighths, then 1 and 1 eighth. We can see if we give them all eighths as the denominators, we have 1 eighth, 4 eighths, 7 eighths, and then it goes down to 5 eighths, then it goes back up to 8 eighths. What's happening is we're adding 3 eighths to get 4 eighths, we're adding another 3 eighths to get 7 eighths, but then we're subtracting 2 eighths. Then we're adding 3 eighths again, adding 3 eighths again, and then subtracting 2 eighths. So a rule may have more than one operation in a sequence. Here we have a sequence with a missing term. We need to find the missing term. We see the denominators are a 6, a 3, a 2, then a 3 again. This one's got a 6. We can give them all a 6 as a common denominator. And we take this term, 1 6, and subtract it from this term, 1 3rd. 1 3rd minus 1 6, giving them both a 6 for a common denominator, we get 2 6 minus 1 6. That's 1 6. Then we take this term as 3 6. We multiply the numerator and denominator by 3. We get 3 6 minus 2 6. We now know that this 1 3rd can be written as 2 6, so we use that for our comparison. 3 6 minus 2 6 is 1 6. So far, the difference is 1 6 between each term. We do 2 thirds, which is 4 6. And we subtract 3 6, this one rewritten with 6 as a denominator, and we get 1 6. So the rule is plus 1 6, so we need to add 2 thirds plus 1 6 for the missing term. 2 thirds plus 1 6, we give them both 6 for a denominator, that's 4 6 plus 1 6, that's 5 6. We know that this missing term must be 5 6. We needed to subtract the first term from the second term, then the third term, the second term from the third term, and the third term from the fourth term. We needed to keep 
subtracting to find the difference between them. And then once we did find that difference, we needed to add it to this term to get the next term because they're all increasing. Bob is mixing red and white paint to make pink paint. For each batch he mixes, he uses a different amount of red paint. In the first batch, he uses two and a half ounces. The second batch, he uses three and five eighths ounces. The third uses four and three fourths ounces. The fourth uses five and seven eighth ounces. If this pattern continues, how much red paint will he use in the seventh batch? So here we've got our first batch, our second one, our third one, our fourth one. We don't know what the fifth batch is as the fifth term or the sixth or the seventh. This is the one we really need. We think we write the terms in the sequence as equivalent fractions with a common denominator. So we have a two, an eight, and a four, and another eight. We can use the multiple eight for them all to meet. Then we compare the consecutive terms to find the rule. Two and a half, having eight as a denominator, we get two and four eighths. This is already having an eight for a denominator, so we leave that one alone. Four and three fourths would be four and six eighths with eight as a denominator. That already has an eight. So now that they all have an eight for a denominator, a common denominator, we can find out the rule. We see two and four eighths, three and five eighths, four and six eighths, five and seven eighths. Look at what the fractions are doing. Four eighths, five eighths, six eighths, seven eighths. They're each going up by one eighth. And look at the whole numbers, two, three, four, five. They're going up by one. So our rule is plus one and one eighth. We must need to take five and seven eighths and add one and one eighth. Seven eighths plus one eighth is eight eighths. Five plus one is six. We know when the numerator and denominator are the same, it's equal to one whole. So six plus one is seven. This fifth term is seven. Now we take this seven and add one eighth, we get eight and one eighth. Now we add eight and one eighth plus one and one eighth, we get nine and two eighths. But this is not in simplest form. In simplest form, it would be nine and one fourth. We can divide the numerator and denominator by the common factor two, we get nine and one fourth. Now because the terms are increasing, the rule may involve addition, but we can use subtraction to find the difference between each term so we know how much we need to add to find the term. If the terms are decreasing, the rule could use subtraction. Now, if you notice, I said it may involve addition and it could use subtraction. I'll explain that at the end of the video. Here we need to find the missing term. We have two and three tenths, four and a half, six and seven tenths, eight and nine tenths. Then we have our missing term and we have 13 and three tenths. We start by doing four and a half minus two and three tenths to find the difference between them. They need the same denominator, so we're gonna use 10. Four and a half is equal to four and five tenths. Now we can subtract two and three tenths, we get two and two tenths. We do six and seven tenths minus four and five tenths. We already know that four and a half is four and five tenths, so we don't need to convert it again. We don't need to re, you know, change it to a common denominator. We already know that four and five tenths is four and a half. We subtract six and seven tenths minus four and five tenths, we get two and two tenths. So now we have two of them that are showing two and two tenths, but we need to check this one. We do eight and nine tenths minus six and seven tenths, we get two and two tenths again. So yes, it's very likely that the rule is add two and two tenths. We take this term and we add two and two tenths. Eight and nine tenths plus two and two tenths. We add the numerators, nine plus two is 11. We have 11 tenths. We add the whole numbers and get a 10. Now we have 10 and 11 tenths but this is an improper fraction. It's a fraction greater than one because the numerator is larger than the denominator. 10 and 11 tenths is equal to 10 plus 10 tenths as one whole plus one tenth. We can rewrite it as 11 and one tenth.
We have 10, 11, and 1 tenth. So we know the missing term is 11 and 1 tenth. We need to use subtraction between the terms to find out the differences between them. Then once we found this common difference, we used it to add it to this term to know the missing term. We can even check to see if 11 and 1 tenth plus 2 and 2 tenths is equal to 13 and 3 tenths. That would be a 1 numerator plus a 2 numerator. That would be 3 tenths. Yep. And 11 plus 2 is 13. Yes, 13 and 3 tenths. So it works for the whole sequence. If we're given a start term and the rule, we can write terms of the sequence. Our start term is 9 and 7 eighths, and the rule is to subtract 1 and 1 fourth. And because they have different denominators, we can give them a common denominator of 8. 9 and 7 eighths minus 1 and 2 eighths. That would be 8 and 5 eighths. We know that this term is 8 and 5 eighths. Now, we need to subtract another 1 and 1 fourth, but we know we're using 1 and 2 eighths. So it has the same denominator. So we have 8 and 5 eighths minus 1 and 2 eighths. That's 7 and 3 eighths for our next term. Now we have 7 and 3 eighths. We need to subtract 1 and 2 eighths. 3 minus 2 is 1. We have 1 eighth. 7 minus 1 is 6. We have 6 and 1 eighth. Now we have 6 and 1 eighth, and we need to take away 1 and 2 eighths. But the numerator in the minuen is not great enough to subtract the numerator in the subtrahend. We learned that in the last video. We need to rename this 6 and 1 eighth is equal to a 5 plus an 8 eighths as a 1 whole to make 6, plus this 1 eighth. We can add the 8 eighths plus 1 eighth to make 9 eighths, and we have 5 and 9 eighths. Now we can subtract 1 and 2 eighths. 9 minus 2 is 7. We have 7 eighths. And 5 minus 1 is 4. We have 4 and 7 eighths for the next term. So if what I did here really confused you, you need to look in the description for video 6.6 .6 and watch that one real quick. So do you notice how it said the rule was to subtract 1 and 1 fourth, but because we needed eighths, we found it was 1 and 2 eighths, and then that's what we used for the rest of our math to find the next term in the sequence. So we can continue using the equivalent fraction that has the common denominator. Scalp hair grows at an average rate of 1 and 1 fourth centimeters each month. If Sophia's hair is currently 26 and a half centimeters, about how long will her hair be in one week, two weeks, and three weeks? So we think, we need to add 26 and a half centimeters plus 1 and 1 fourth centimeter for the first week. Then add 1 and 1 fourth centimeter to each previous term of our sequence. So we have 26 and a half plus 1 and 1 fourth. They need the same denominator. So 26 and a half is the same thing as 26 and 2 fourths. We get 27 and 3 fourths centimeter after one week. For the second week, after two weeks, we need to add the 27 and 3 fourths plus another 1 and 1 fourth. 3 plus 1 is 4. We get 4 fourths. 27 plus 1 is 28. We have the same numerator and denominator, so that's equal to one whole. We have 28 plus 1. That's 29 centimeters. For the third week, after three weeks, we just need to add this 29 centimeters to 1 and 1 fourth centimeters, we get 30 and 1 fourth centimeters. And if Sophia didn't cut her hair and it continued to grow at this rate, we would be able to tell you how long her hair would be in 12 weeks or 20 weeks or 30 weeks or more. So as I said before, if the terms of the sequence are increasing, it could involve addition. This is why. If the terms of the sequence are increasing, we cannot assume that the rule involves addition because the terms may increase if the rule involves multiplication. If we have 2, then 3, then 4 and a half, then 6 and 3 fourths, 
the rule could be multiply by one and a half. If we have one and a half two times, it's equal to three. And if we do three times one and a half, we'll have four and a half. And if we do four and a half times one and a half, we'll have six and three fourths. So it's increasing, but it's not using addition. So that's why it says it could be addition if it's increasing. And if the terms of the sequence are decreasing, we cannot assume that the rule involves only subtraction because the terms may decrease if the rule involves division. Here we have a 20, then a 10, then a 5, then a 2 and a half, then a 1 and 1 fourth. They are definitely decreasing, but what's happening is we have 20 divided by 2, which is 10, 10 divided by 2, which is 5, 5 divided by 2, which is 2 and a half, 2 and a half divided by 2, which is 1 and 1 fourth. So it's decreasing and it's not using subtraction, it's using division. So be very careful, it's not definite that it's addition if it's increasing, and it's not definitely using subtraction if it's decreasing, okay? Remember that you can click this description for the previous helpful videos like the patterns with decimals of 3.10 and doing equivalent fractions and common denominators in video 6.4 and renaming the fractions and mixed numbers in 6.6 .6, and that there's a link to PayPal or Patreon if you want to help out Lola and Betty and Bonnie and me to thank me for helping you with math. Our next lesson, 6.9, is going to be word problem solving. We're going to learn to use the strategy work backwards for addition and subtraction of fractions in word problems. Have a wonderful day. Bye.